Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tinnitus TV. Today, I am talking to the one and only Satchel from Steel Panther. You know, back in 2009, I'm pretty sure I was the first Canadian journalist to interview one of these guys. Shortly after the release of their hilariously raunchy debut album, Feel the Steel, I spoke to frontman Michael Starr, supposedly while he was at the dock being treated for an STD. Nearly 15 years and who knows how many STDs later, these clown princes of LA sleaze rock haven't changed their tune in the slightest. On their sixth album, On the Prowl, they're still cranking out hilarious hair metal odes to sex and drugs and rock and roll, complete with fearsome guitar shredding, tight trousered vocals, and lyrics offensive enough to make David Lee Roth blush. Clearly, it's high time to check back in with the Panther. So I got guitarist and main songwriter Satchel to zoom in from his mom's basement to discuss three-word album titles, tiny guitars, the importance of being offensive, getting his face tattooed on his ass, and much, much more. Buckle up, kids. This one is a wild ride. Where are you today, <laughs> Satchel? Well, I live in Vegas now because I moved to where the hookers and the cocaine are. And uh, it's been great, you know? They're, they're essential workers all the time here in Vegas. Uh, especially from your perspective. <laughs> well, yeah, so, absolutely. What's, there's, no, there's no heavy metal without hookers. We all know that. Uh, but I got to say, it, it, it's still the morning. It seems like a very un-rock and roll time for you to be working. I've been up for three days, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're looking remarkably chipper. Thank you. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm always, there's always food in my mom's fridge, so I'm a happy guy. <laughs> <laughs> and your mom lets you keep all your guitars in the basement. She does. Uh, well, I had nowhere else to go. And these things are very uh, affected by the lack of humidity here in Vegas. So I said, Mom, you know, you're going to be dead soon. So let me move in. She said, OK. So is, is mom like uh, an old showgirl or, or what? Well, no, I mean, yeah, I guess you could call it a showgirl, a hooker, showgirl. I mean, they're, they're all the same. Uh, but yeah, she's. She's 100 and 109 now. She's okay. She's doing good. She looks, she's, her tits are only four years old, though. Uh, I can't do that math. I think you could. <laughs> <laughs> I was, we, we did a show like in uh, North Carolina a couple of days ago, and there was this old lady that was there the last time we played, and she got on stage. I'm not kidding you. She was in her late 70s, maybe early 80s. And she pulled her shirt up for me. And as she was doing it, I was like, oh, no, no, I don't want to see this. <laughs> and her tits were great. Well, they were that big and round. I was like, wow. Well, that's good, because otherwise you're just stuck with that and you can't poke out your mind's eye, you know? So I saw her after the show and I was like, you got great tits. And she was like, thanks. And I told her, I said, I was really scared when you started pulling your shirt up and I, I was like really pleasantly surprised. And uh, did she inspire the title of the new album on the prowl? And then she sucked my dick. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's nice to see that you're not an ageist in these matters. Yeah, not at all. You can't be. That's the thing. A lot, I notice a lot of guys are very judgmental. They go out there and they're like, oh, I'm not going to fuck that girl. And that girl's nose is too big. And this girl has, you know, dirt in between her toes and you get to a certain point and you realize I'm getting older you know I'm not really taking care of myself if they all fuck me I'll fuck them too fuck it you know well fair enough fair enough so let's let's get down to business here you've got the new album on the prowl coming out in a couple of weeks uh sticking with the three word title uh, that is your uh, that is your way I think at this point you know, I didn't notice that, but you are obviously very good at pattern recognition. I can count to three. There you go. Uh, you know, is that, well, I mean, we we do have all you can eat. That's a four word title. But so, then the one before it was balls out, which is two words. So it still averages three. So basically you're, you're wrong. You made a statement, <laughs> you're sure. totally wrong, but it's okay. I do that shit all the time. And as long as you, you want to make... deal in facts here or what? <laughs> When you make it with enough conviction, people just go, shit, he's right. When you said that, I was like, every album we have has three, three, three letters. Three I think times. that's more of a reflection of your, your memory span uh, at this point than anything else, right? 
There's no doubt about it. I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember what day it is or what I have for breakfast. Or if uh, I have. So, but 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 sixth album. Uh, and and uh, first one that is is this one totally self-produced for the first time? Uh, I don't know. Is it? You tell me. I think so. I don't. I think. I think technically yes. But we we always have a process that's, um, you know very similar every time we we um go it's it was a little bit different this time because of the the pandemic which made it really hard for us to tour and a lot of bands make money touring which we do as well and that's sort of how we pay for our records i think it's how a lot of bands pay for their records if if they can even make records at this point but um a lot of the money from the touring goes into the records and so this time we sort of did everything backwards and, um, uh, you know, we sort of recorded as much as we could with, with zero money, which was basically at my mom's house. And, um, and then when we could afford to go do drums in a uh, place where we, won't, where we could afford to pay for the drums and get good drum sounds, uh, then we did that kind of last. But uh, ultimately, you know, it's all about the tunes and that process is always similar you know we you know i do a lot of the writing and, and i'll i'll throw a song to the guys and they'll tell me if they like it or not and and um and then if we want to make changes we will you know arrangement wise and things like that but uh it's it's uh you know i like i like having jay jay rustin is a great producer and he's a great and he's a really good uh he's got a great ear for mixing so i always like having him involved um we really couldn't even afford to get Jay involved until we mixed at this point, but uh, but I like having Jay involved, and um, it's fun to have him there as an extra set of ears and as a producer. So, uh, but we work well with Jay, and this this time around we we sort of did it a little bit backwards, but but um, but we love wor working with him as a producer as well. So. I also noticed that you went from uh, your shortest album last time out to your longest album this time out. Is this just uh, is that just having like a backlog of stuff from the pandemic? No, I mean, you know what? That That's just sort of the the, pro the process. I think every artist, like every band, uh, every time you do a record. Well, for us, it's just two things. It's do we have any new songs and how long has it been since we released a record? And um, this one took a little longer to get out there, even though, I mean, honestly, the last time we released a record, we were like, hey, let's go tour. And then they shut the whole world down. And, you know, this record was probably all done being written uh, by June of 2020. And it was just because we were in our houses and, I was doing a lot of writing and, 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 uh, you know, you end up having the, you know, a body of work and then, and then it's just a matter of like, what do we put, want to put on this record? Right. So I, I think that there's some of that that goes into it, you know, especially with the attention span of people nowadays. I mean, I'm sure what, there's what people that, something? there's people, yeah, exactly. There's people that agonize over, should I make this TikTok clip 12 seconds or can I do it, you know, should I do the normal nine? People, you know, people don't usually stick around for very long, especially with records. But that said, you know, we're a heavy metal band and a lot of our, we have a wide demographic. We have old people and young people and um, we don't usually get played on the radio, even though we've got a, a number one uh, song on German rock radio right now, which is pretty awesome for us. But uh, we don't count on that because we we have fans that know every song that we do. So we don't ever go, hey, as long as we have a good single, we can throw a bunch of fill on a record. Usually it's it's which songs do we like the best to put on a record? And sometimes it's, you know, you have a body of like 18 songs. Sometimes you have 14 and, and but it's still time to make a record. You want to do it because you got all these songs that you like. And, um, you know, with heavy metal rules, it was, uh, it was, Hey, you know, let's, let's do an album that's a little bit shorter this time, because a lot of our favorite records from the eighties were seven or eight songs. I mean, you know, like 1984 had what, eight songs and a keyboard intro. 
So that's that's what we said to ourselves. We were like, you know, does it really need to be a 14 song record? And we've got some songs that are, or some albums that are longer that I love dearly, like All You Can Eat, I love that record. Balls Out is a great record. Um, our, our first record, I think on, you know, European release had like 14 songs or something. But um, it's really just a matter of like, do we feel strongly about each song that we're releasing? And On the Prowl, we, I love every song on it, but I say that about every record. And then there's always trolls that say, that's the worst record you ever did. Well, it'd be pretty shitty if you came out and went, eh, we got a new album. It's kind of half-assed. We kind of phoned it in. Yeah, well, that's the luxury. I think that's the luxury of making records right now is that, and I mean, there's there's artists that are making money still on records, but most people don't really make money on records. So you don't really have to do a record. If we do a record, it's because we want to put a record out there. We feel like it'll be something that our fans enjoy and it's something that we enjoy. And, uh, you know, unless you're making like a concept album, every, every, every time you write, make, you know, put a record out. And I think this goes for a lot of artists. It's usually just a body of work of the songs that you've written from a certain time period. And you have to pick out from those songs and go, what songs go well together? You know, what if I was listening to a record of these songs and I, what order would I put them in? And, and what's an exciting way to listen to this? And, and then you hope that maybe 10% of your fans will actually listen to the whole record all the way through at least once in their lives. <laughs> and, and our fans do that. They, they, they tend to listen to the whole record, which is great. I find it interesting that you raise concept albums, though, because honestly, uh, your whole career is a concept album, really. To yes, to a large degree, and and um, which I which I love, and and uh, you know, there, there's pros and cons to that because there's 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 some people that that think that we should have stopped after the first record or even earlier, and um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, stop before you started. <laughs> but the irony is that there's a lot more freedom doing what we do too. Like we obviously approach everything with a sense of humor, but um, so, but we've created a safe space for being offensive, right? Which is in this day and age, that's really not only a beautiful thing, but it's, I think it's really important as well. And uh, a lot of people that um, otherwise wouldn't have a place to go can come to our shows for instance, and feel comfortable laughing at off-color jokes and songs about things that might offend people. And, and there's been people that have tried to cancel us online and, and our fans rally to our defense, and which is great because then we don't have to defend ourselves at all. And um, it's, it's awesome. We, we, um, even though, you know, when I approach songwriting, I, I, I generally think to myself, well, it's, Got, it's got to have some sort of a humorous take on it, right? Because that's sort of what we do. Um, I never worry, which I know the vast majority of, of songwriters out there usually worry about, oh, can I say that? Can I mention that word? Or is it going to offend this group? And I usually just go, I don't care. I'm going to write, I'm going to write the song. I, I would think you, you, you must uh, be in the opposite position of going, yes. is this offensive enough? How, yes. You know, is this really going to do it? Yes. Is this too light in the loafers or can I, can I be more egregious with my offense on this? And it is, you know, I, I have, a, I have a fun time doing that. And I usually don't have a problem um, finding offensive subject matter. I don't know why I, that is. I'm amazed at how many times, I mean, cause I would think honestly, after a while, you're just going to run out of euphemisms, but you guys never seem to, you know? Well, there, there's a lot to me. I mean, there's a lot of funny shit out there, first of all. And, you know, a lot of people always, you know, a lot of people comment, oh, you know, these guys, you know, when the joke's old. And like, to me, I think it's really funny. Like, first of all, is have you have you ever been tired of sex? No, of course not. Sex never gets old. It ne you can you can fuck a girl. You can fuck. A, a, I mean, you might get tired of one girl. I understand that. But if you if you're fucking a girl or a guy, whatever you're into, if you're having sex, you don't, it's not easy to get tired of it. It's just this, it's always fun. And I look at the way we approach songs and humor and sex and all that stuff very much like that. It's 
there's always a new position to fuck in or a new person to fuck, right? And there's always a new approach to take to songwriting. There's always different melodies out there. And um, it's, uh, you know, somebody was comparing uh, the world to a piano recently. I heard, heard somebody comparing the world as a closed system to the piano as a closed system, right? Like, and, and uh, you know, notes and songwriting for that matter. Like a piano is a closed system, but within that so system, there's an infinite amount of possibilities. And so songwriting is the same exact way. Um, it really just is limited by your, your brain. And thankfully, right. we don't have too many brain cells to get in the way. <laughs> well, now you've got a new brain in the band. Though. You've, got, you've got Spider taking over. Um, taking you know, over? Is that what he's telling people? Uh, well, we'll see, I guess. Uh, you, you had that whole competition thing, and then, and then you end up hiring the guy who's basically been the fifth Panther for, for 10 years anyway. Wait, who's the fifth Panther? Oh, well, I mean, he was, he, was, he was your photographer, he was your guitar, you know what? he was your tour manager. Spider, well, Spider is, he's an old friend, and he's, and he's like an old pair of shoes. Kind of smells like an old pair of shoes, too, but he's a great guy, and we looked around at other bass players because we wanted to see what else was out there. And, but, but, you know, truthfully, Spider has filled in for, he filled in every time Lexi couldn't make the show for whatever uh, reason. And Spider was always the go-to guy that we'd call, and he always did a great job. He's an awesome dude, and um, you know, I'm still making guy. him tune your guitars in between songs, though, right? I make him do all kinds of shit because that's the way I I show him that he is subordinate to me, and I I have to remind him of that because he is more Type A than Lexi, but I I just it's I whip him, I whip him into shape, and you know. If was he, he a good road manager? Uh, he's 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 like a jack of all trades. He's not good at, at uh, he's not really good at a lot of stuff, but but he's really good at taking orders. And that's the most important thing to me. Did, did you ever hear of, of a road manager named Phil Kaufman? He used Phil to he used he used to work for Graham Parsons, the old country rock guy back in the day. And yes, when Graham, cocaine on him. And when when Graham Parsons died, Phil stole his coffin. And took it out to the desert to Joshua Tree and set it on fire because he thought that's where Graham would have, you know, wanted to go, right? Yeah. So is that is that something that you know Spider would do for you? That's really really cool. I wonder if he could get arrested for that. Like, hey, oh yeah, he got arrested for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way to find out. Um, you know, I, I, I've got a really, I think I have a really healthy outlook on death. Like. Once I'm dead, I don't really give a fuck. And I don't give that many fucks being alive. So when I'm dead, I'm going to really not give a fuck. If somebody wants to drag me out into the fucking, in my carcass into the desert and, and have coyotes shit on me, I don't really care. I'm fucking dead. <laughs> oh, but this is your last chance for glory. You know, you could, you could, you could get somebody to like put you in fireworks tubes and, and you know, blow you out at pyro at the show or something. Yeah, know? launch me out of a cannon. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, you know, not gonna hurt. Uh huh. Uh huh. But now, now you got two guys in the band without tattoos. Uh, well, is this allowed? I'm getting my own face tattooed on my own ass, so girls can look at me from every angle. Uh -huh. um, but I've got that appointment. That appointment is ne next week. But I'm. But you know what? Spider. Listen, Spider being Type A, he knows I'm like the alpha guy here in the band, and he's trying to copy me in a lot of ways. Obviously, you know, his, you know, his hair color, he goes with the same hair stylist as I do. And um, but he doesn't pull it off with the flair that I pull it off with. And I think that's great because I it's just easier to get all the chicks now for me. You know, the girls felt safe when Lexi was there because he was very androgynous. But with Spider, he's like he's kind of like bulky and intimidating. And I'm like, I just swoop in and I just like snake all the chicks. and and. Michael's just too slow to catch him at this point. It's great. Well, it's the pizza, right? What's that? It's all the pizza. He's too slow. Well, you know, I, I'm the one who orders pizza after the show, and I always make sure he has the pizza he likes back there. Uh -huh. It's very difficult for him to turn it down. And I see you guys on, on YouTube uh, sitting around telling dad jokes for some weird reason. The reason is, a lot of people don't understand this, 
dad jokes are sexy. They, I, have you, have you tried, you obviously haven't tried this yet. They are such a hit with the ladies now. I have gotten more pussy with dad jokes than I did with uh, the knockout pills that I put in their drink. It's amazing. Like girls <laughs> just seem to love it seems you. like both sides of the Cosby coin though there, right? You know? Yes. <laughs> Cosby coin is our next, the Cosby coin, three letters. That's a new album title right there. There you go, write that down. Oh, or get Spider to write it down if he can write. Yeah, I'll tell him. I'll order him too. Uh, but it it does make me think, I mean, at, at once upon a time, you guys uh, had a, didn't you like try and do a pilot for a TV series once upon a time? We've done like nine pilots and they're all amazing. What's the problem? Well, the problem is, um, you know, every time we get involved with a TV production company, Michael usually fucks one of the wives of the executives. I tell them not to because there's plenty of fish in the sea and you don't want to dip your wick in the company ink, but he can't stop himself. That's this is the same thing he does to me. He tries to fuck all the groupies that I that I've fucked. He tries to get in there and then it's his way of basically pissing on his territory and saying, hey, this is my bitch. But you can't do that to the head of, of CBS or MTV. You just can't do it. Not if you want a TV show. That's why our we're going to self-produce a TV show and put it out on our own and it's going to blow your fucking socks off your tits. And what's the concept of this show going to be? There is no concept. That's what's so great about it. We're just going to start filming and we're going to let Jason edit the whole fucking thing. Uh-huh. And, 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 and what's, so it's just going to be reality TV with Steel Panther? Well, that's the thing that we've noticed over the years is that when you put a camera on everybody in this band except for spider and sticks and michael um this mostly me i'm incredible like i can just fucking do stuff i'm entertaining people can't take their eyes off me and especially if i'm naked from the waist down like i am right now so speaking of things we don't want to see yeah. what's that speaking of things we don't want to see well i won't stand up if you don't want no, that's okay. See, I, I always thought you guys should do a TV series, uh, like a sitcom, where you're all suburban dads. Like you could be an insurance salesman, and and you know, uh, Michael could be running a pizza place or something. And yeah. then on the weekend, you know, you put on the wigs, you go out, and you. I don't have a wig. Well, let's try not to get into the fact that Michael has a new wig. All right. Um, I don't think. Oh, he's the only one. <laughs> well, let's face it, Michael's starting to lose his hair in his old age, so he got, it's not really a wig, it's more like hair extensions, I think that's what he calls it, but, you know, he's a little self-conscious, and um, he's, I think he considers it a midlife crisis, if, you know, if, I guess it would be a midlife crisis if he's going to live to be 140, but, you know. <laughs> He's going through it right now, and and uh, but I'm proud of him. He's doing what he can to look good. It's hard to compete with me, and I, you know, I get it. Well, I mean, I remember talking to him like almost 15 years ago, and he he admitted then he'd had a facelift and he was getting Botox and collagen. Uh, what about you? What are you doing to uh, to stave off the Grim Reaper there? I try to stay all natural because I I don't want the effects of chemicals. And surgeries that you never know how they're going to turn out, you know. So I basically stay natural. I don't do any uh, hardcore stuff except for cocaine. I do cocaine every day. Drink a lot of water, but you have to hydrate, you know. So the cocaine suppresses the appetite. The water replenishes the soul, basically. And um, so cocaine and water is a very good thing to do. I also Listen, you need nutrients. You know, I, I, I make sure I have a right balance of protein and carbs. You know, I, I, eat, uh, I eat more than 25 to 3,000 calories a day, but I also throw up about 1,500 of that. Mm -hmm. So it's a good balance. Um, you know, I talked to a, uh, my, my health guru, Yogi. She's a yogi. She's uh, in Los Angeles. She's very new agey. Um, she doesn't use 
telephones because she doesn't like the 5G radiation. So uh, she basically sends a homing pigeon to my, where I live at my mom's house with notes, with daily, daily notes of inspiration. Like uh, this morning I opened my door at my mom's house and there was a uh, homing pigeon from my yogi. Her name's Sharice. And I opened the note and the note said, this is beautiful. I don't know if you've ever heard this. Be the change you wish to see in the world. <laughs> I just thought that was amazing. I don't know where she comes up with this shit. I don't know. But, but, can, I, but I think Cocaine and Water can also be your next album title. I think that was yesterday's um, inspiration. It was inspiration? Just, just uh -huh. Cocaine and Water on the note. Uh, you know, I, I see on, on your on your website that you are selling like little mini guitars. Yes. Why, why why does anybody want a mini guitar and what do you do with a mini guitar? Well, it's great when you're at a party and, you know, people are talking about themselves and you want to impress somebody, you can say, I play a little guitar. Yeah. I walked right into that one, didn't I? You kind of did. But these things are the replicas of our 1987 right. guitar and they look badass and they're they're mementos of of this time period that we're going through right now with Steel Panther which is a wonderful time on the prowls a great record uh a lot of people love that song 1987 that's why it's number 1 in Germany right now and um i think that's just a cool thing to have if you're a Steel Panther fan in your house sitting on your desk or your toilet or wherever you do cocaine in your or house toilet on your deck yeah it's great i mean it's it's just one of those things i mean you know when you're a fan of a band i would be i would buy that if i didn't get all all of them free but it's just really cool to have in your house you know it's kind of like what are those little those little dolls that they sell that there's like they're like um bobbleheads the, the bob not the bobbleheads but the um they have yeah, the, they're like a chain. You know what I'm talking about? You can get yeah. them at like um they're not bobblehead dolls, but they're there's a they're newer. Oh, okay. They're collectors' items and they've got like everybody from Motley Crue to like, you know, famous cartoons and stuff like that. But it's not you yet. They're collectors items. It's, it's a collector's item. So this guitar is just super cool and it, and it's very detailed as well. What 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 merch, what piece of merch would you love to sell? Well, I mean, because I can think of a lot of things you guys could put your name on. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's the thing. And, you know, obviously, Gene Simmons has been a, an inspiration for that. But um, we, I mean, there's really no limit to what you can sell. I tell you right now, cocaine sells better than anything. And you don't even have to have it be, you don't really have to personalize it. So people just buy it because they like it. So, but t-shirts go great as well. I mean, I think a lot of people um, want to want to wave the flag of the, their favorite band. So a lot of people buy t-shirts. Um, I'm amazed you don't have sex toys, though. Well, I do. Oh, you're talking about ones to sell? Yeah. Um, sex toys. You know what? That's something that we've we've thought about. That's some. You know, there are bands that have done that before. Um, uh, we we're going to get life size dildos of the band but there was too much of a difference between my you know 12 inch cock and michael's i mean michael's we could just put in the corner of the package you know what i mean and uh kind of like have it be like an extra added something for your pet or something but yeah i mean that's something we could do dildos are always a great thing you know what we should do we should do scratch and sniff dildos Smells exactly like our dicks. Smell the steel. There you go. <laughs> all right, sir. Listen, I could talk to you all day long, but I know you have other people to uh, enlighten and entertain. So uh, I will thank you for your time and, and let you go. Well, I appreciate the interview, and I hope I see you at a Steel Panther show very, very soon. And I promise I'll put my pants on. Uh, I think I think I can speak for all of us when I say thank you for that. Well. Not the ladies. <laughs> All right, brother. Have a good one. See you down the hey, road. You have, you have a great day.